Wild Talents, by Charles Hoyfort, Chapter 17D. In the Daily Mail, April 5, 1924, was an account of invisible rays, which had been discovered by Mr. Harry Grindle Matthews, powerful enough, under laboratory conditions, to stop the engine of a motorcycle, at a distance of 50 feet. Of course, high among virtues are the honorable lies of governments. Whether virtuously said, or accurately reported, I don't know. But it is said, or reported, that, in the year 1929, the British government spent $500,000 investigating alleged long-distance death rays, and developed nothing that was effective. It is said, or reported, that the Italian Navy gave opportunity to an inventor to demonstrate what he could do with death rays, but that his demonstrations came to nothing. We have no data for thinking that, in the year 1929, any government was in possession of the secret of long-distance death rays. The forced landings of the French airplanes, in the summer of 1923, remain unexplained. There may be powerful rays that are not electromagnetic. French aviators may have been brought to Earth by no power that is called physical, though I know of no real demarcation between what is called physical and what is called mental. See back to the series of mysterious attacks in England in April and May 1927. Three times, as if acted upon by an unknown influence, automobiles behaved unaccountably. Our data are upon accidents that have not been satisfactorily explained. There have been occurrences that were similar to effects that inventors are, by mechanical means, striving for in the cause of military efficiencies. And these experimenters are practical persons. It may be that we are on the track of a subtler slaughter. It looks as if a lonely possessor of a secret, such as is called a cult, operated wantonly, or in the malicious exercise of a power upon automobiles, in England, in the months of April and May, 1927. He was a criminal. But I am a practical thinker, and a useful citizen, on the track of much efficiency, which will be at the disposal of God's second choice of people, which I think we must be, judging by the afflictions that are upon us, at this time of writing, a power that would, by this great nation, be used only righteously, if anybody could ever distinguish between righteousness and exploitation and tyranny. One of the engaging paradoxes of our existence, which strip mathematics of meaning, is that a million times a crime is patriotism. I am unable to conceive that a power to pick planes out of the sky would be so terrible as to stop war, because up comes the notion that counter-operations would pick the pickers. If we could have new abominations, so unmistakably abominable as to hush the lubricators, who plan murder to stop slaughter, but that is only dreamery, here in our existence of the hyphen, which is the symbol of hypocrisy.